Per request, here's my way too early predictions for EMEA and Pacific, where we'll go over week one pickums, who I think will move out of their group, and other storylines slash stats that I think will come true. For APAC, we have another Zeta Division versus Global Esports rematch. These teams played twice already, and Zeta came out on top both times. Hopefully, Global Esports will stop running solo Viper on Bind, but even if they do, I still have Zeta beating them. Team Secret versus DRX is going to be interesting as well. I can see both these teams fighting for that third spot to get into Master Shanghai. I also want to note that when Genji were on their win streak, these two teams pushed them the furthest, both having games where they went into overtime, or at least were close to it. The thing is with Team Secret, you don't know what you're going to get from them. One day, this Filipino group can look like the best in the region, and the very next day, they could just look like average Joes. DRX, on the other hand, is known as being constantly a top-tier team. They also brought in a new player to the main roster. Yep, you heard that right, they're doing it again. Possibly swapping players in and out during the season. So I'ma go with the team that isn't entertaining these six-man shenanigans. Here we have Bleed vs Talon Esports. After kickoff, former DRX player Zest joined the team, which I think is a pretty solid move. Zest, in my opinion, was one of the best available Pacific players. I think his addition will help greatly, so I have them winning. T1 vs Payrex is going to be interesting as well. As most of you guys already know, Jing is back. Last year, many people said he was the world's best race, even though Jagamo has a strong case for that title too. Nonetheless, Payrex barely beat T1 on split when they faced off. That game went into triple overtime. It's also been 200 days since Jing last played an official tier 1 Valorant match. Worst case scenario, Jing does bad because of Rust, but I think Paper X will still beat T1. Mainly because Manya at the time struggled on raise, but they were still able to get a win. Maybe this is just a copium speaking in me, but there could be a good chance that Jing does well in this match too. Here I have Team Secret beating RRQ2 since they look more impressive during kickoffs and have more games under their belt. I also don't think DRX should lose to Global Esports either, and shoot, Genji are the current kings of Pacific for a reason. Just like there's a reason why DFM hasn't gotten a tier 1 win in over a year now. Overall, I believe that Genji and T1 will move on from the Alpha group. I believe that the third qualification spot will either go to Team Secret or Bleed. I really want Bleed to win it, mainly because these Ascension team spots aren't guaranteed after two years. They need to make a lot of noise and leave their mark before they possibly have to go back to tier 2. However, Team Secret has just shown more for me to believe in them, so I'll go So I'll go with them moving on. For the Omega group, I have DRX, PaperX, and Talon moving on. I know a lot of people are still high on RRQ, which is fair. I personally think the content that I've been watching on Talon's YouTube channel has brainwashed me into picking them, but honestly, I don't think they're a bad team at all. For EMEA, we have less matches to worry about during week one. We'll start off with K Corp versus Giant X, who made some roster changes by bringing in Purple, and it's speculated that Fatinho will not be playing Duelist anymore, which could help the team. I still have KC winning though. We have a rematch between Core and Team Liquid. I said in my How Bad Is EMEA Really video that Team Liquid on their best days is better than Koi on their best days, so I'm gonna stick with that. I also think Na'Vi is better than Team Liquid. However, I do have to mention that this game is giving me major upset vibes, so I wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong on this one. Fnatic vs Team Heretics was going to be my favorite game to watch from this region, but it seems like Heretics most likely will not be playing on LAN with Mini Boo because he has exams, or Wu due to his visa issues. Some are saying that one of their coaches will play, but I haven't seen any official statements about that yet. There have been a couple of times that I can remember where a team won with a coach as a sub, like MIBR vs 100 Thieves. However, that was LCQ 100 Thieves, and Team Heretics will be going against Fnatic, possibly the best team in EMEA. So I have to go with Fnatic winning this, even though I think Heretics is a better team when they have their full roster together. I also have Team Liquid losing to Foot Esports. I slept on Turkish AIM in Champs 2023, and I never will again, unless it's BBL, where I have Gentle Mates winning. From the Alpha group, Carmen Corp, Fnatic, and Team Vitality will most likely move on into the playoffs in my opinion, while I see Team Heretics, Navi, and Foot Esports getting out of the Omega group. In my previous EMEA video, I did mention a silly hot take about KC's jerseys and how that will hold them back, but I want to add a different one for this video. I think Team Heretics can still finish number one in their group. 
yes, they most likely will lose to Fnatic. But I think they can still beat Team Vitality when they're not at their full strength. I realize this is still a long shot. BBL and Team Liquid is doable in my opinion though. And by the time they face Carmen Corp, I believe either Minibu or Woot should be good to play by then too. Team Heretic shocked the world once, why can't they do it again? My Pacific hot take will be that they will have the highest clove pick rate, followed by EMEA, then China, and lastly Americas. Clove just screams Paper X's W gaming playstyle, in my opinion. They also have a history of just playing wacky comps and making them look good. I have EMEA second not only because Angel exists, but because we've seen EMEA embrace Riot's changes the most during kickoffs. Yoru had a higher pick rate than Jet. That's insane to me. I also wouldn't be surprised if China are the first to bust out Clove though. They were one of the first regions to select ISO in a match, but I believe it was during an Ascension game. And I have America's last because I think they're going to be more busy with making Gecko work. Busio's already cosplaying him, Tens looks pretty good throwing Dizzy and Wingman into the fray, and I believe Leviathan was messing around with Gecko too. But yep, these are my predictions. I know this video was a little bit shorter. I didn't want to waste anyone's time with just me yapping as much. The next few videos are going to be a little bit more creative and out there though, I promise. But till next time, stay safe and I'll be yapping in the next one.